Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first video in our automation and cloud app security series. My name is Caroline Lee. I'm a program manager in our cloud and AI security customer experience team. I'm also joined by Sebastian Molendyke, a senior PM on my team. And today we're going to be talking about auto remediating alerts within information protection in cloud app security. The first way we can automate actions is by using the built-in governance actions within MCAS. So MCAS does have a number of actions supported for our connected applications, such as Box, for example, where we can remove external users, a direct shared link, and possibly a collaborator. But in some scenarios, this may not be enough actions for a customer or user, which leads us to our second way which is MCAS's integration with Power Automate. So this allows you to create custom flows for your alerts, such as being able to auto send an email to request validation from users or creating ServiceNow tickets within JIRA. There really is a lot more possibilities within Power Automate because we leverage over 200 connectors within these flows. So now I'm going to get into the specific scenario we're going to talk about today, which is remove sensitive file sharing after requesting user validation. So imagine you have an employee who's working with a partner and has a time sensitive presentation due in the morning. But what happens if you try to share that presentation with that partner? They can't access it due to a file policy that's been created to protect that sensitive information. So you can imagine how frustrating this, this can be for users. But if we have a flow where we request validation from that user, it gives power back to them to make that informed decision on whether or not they want to share those, those files. So now I'm going to move into a sample file policy that we've created and how we would send the, these alerts to Power Automate. So here we've created a file policy called Megan B credit card shared externally, where we have some filters here for a specific owner, Megan Bowens. This is great when you're testing any Power Automate scenarios since it's scoped to one user. We're matching on any files that are publicly shared and then under the inspection method, we've chosen the data classification service to leverage these different in sensitive information types. So we have social security numbers and credit card numbers. And then under alerts, we want to check off send alerts to Power Automate and choose our playbook, which is remove sensitive file sharing after requesting user validation. So now I'm going to hand it off to Seb, who's going to walk us through this flow and how it was configured. Thank you, Caroline, and hi, everyone. So let's review the different components of uh, our flow here. So as you can see, the trigger is uh, when an alert is generated. So there is nothing special here. This is the built-in um, trigger that you have in the connector. And after that, you can see that I'm initializing a few variables. The most important variables, especially when you want to import this um, flow in your environment, is to change the MCAS tenant. So the MCAS tenant will be the URL of your tenant, like this one. And here you can see our uh, demo tenant. And then your token, your API token that you can get from Cloud App Security when you're generating your, uh, your API token. After that, you can see that I'm also initializing a few other variables like a file ID, file name, and application ID. And those different variables will be used to uh, be reused when I'm going to call Cloud App Security API to apply some governance actions. After those variable initialization, you can see that I'm also performing an API call against Cloud App Security API. You have here the endpoint that I'm calling, which is the alert endpoint. And after that, you can see the provider alert ID. The provider alert ID is the alert identification that I can get from my trigger. I'm providing also my API token to authenticate against Cloud App Security, and I will receive uh, at the end of this action, 
an alert that will be uh, a JSON object containing different information. Why am I calling this API instead of using directly the information that I have from the connector? The reason is that I don't have necessary all the right object at the moment from that uh, native connector. So by calling the Cloud App Security API, I'm able to get all the different entity type that I'm going to reuse. After getting those details, I'm performing a call to the office connector to obtain my user email address. We're going to reuse this email address uh, later on when we're going to send an email to the user to ask his validation, his or her validation. After that, I have a scope. So for those who are not familiar with scope, this is uh, a way of organizing in your workflow uh, a set of actions that are um, related together. And within this scope, I'm going to call again the Cloud App Security API to collect more details on the files that uh, trigger this alert. So the first thing that I'm doing here is that I'm filtering the uh, all the entities that I collected from calling my API uh, when I was uh, retrieving all the information on my alert. And I'm looking only for entities that have a file type of objects. After that, I'm setting another variable called file ID with the result of the previous operation. So basically you can uh, you can uh, think that this file ID now contains the identification uh, number in Cloud App Security for the file that triggered this alert. After this, I'm calling once again the Cloud App Security API and I'm passing here as a parameter my file ID. Again, you see here the endpoint. So in this, in this case, this is a files endpoint reusing my API token and passing here as an argument my file ID. I'm then parsing the JSON, so the uh, answer that I got from the API, and I'm setting a different variable, which is the file name here, the file path, and the file ID to my different, um, my different variables with the information that I received from my API call. You can see here that I'm setting once again the file ID um, variable. The reason is that files can have different type of IDs. They can have an ID in the application, like in SharePoint, for example, and that can be a very long um, uh, ID that you will have there. But Cloud App Security also maintains its own file ID. And to be able to apply governance action to those files, I will need the internal MCAS file ID. That's why I'm uh, setting this variable with uh, this specific value. And the application ID here will be the ID of uh, the application where my file is stored, being OneDrive, SharePoint, Box, uh, Salesforce, etc. So that concludes the scope uh, that's collecting all the details from my file. And with all the information that we already collected, the next action is to ask my user for his or her validation by sending the email here, proposing a few different options. So you can see here in the uh, body an HTML formatted uh, message. So that's something that you can uh, perfectly customize to meet all the requirements that you have within your company. And I'm reusing different dynamic variable like the display name, which is coming from uh, my Office 365 connection when I was retrieving the user email. The email is also coming from that specific uh, object. And then here is the message that we're sending to the user, explaining that uh, a specific file located in a specific location with a specific access level and matching a specific uh, DLP uh, policy uh, has been shared externally. And so we provide the details about uh, the rules that we have internally, and we ask the user for uh, choosing one of the proposed options. And you can see here that in the options that we're proposing to the user is to keep the file sharing, removing the sharing, or removing external users. So Caroline will show you that uh, my user will receive such email containing those different options. And the next step is that our workflow will wait for the selected option uh, coming from our user. So that's the next step. And I'm using here a switch based on the different value that are possible. So let's review the first case, which is keep. And this is a case when the user clicked on a button because either we have here a false positive or because the user has a business justification for this file being shared externally. 
you can see that we're using the native co uh, connector and uh, providing here the alert ID to close our alert. And we're also here adding a custom message for the, the alert. So we know uh, why this, uh, this alert was considered as resolved. After resolving the alert in Cloud App Security, then we're sending an email to the end user, confirming that because of their answer, we closed the alert. The next case is remove uh, sharing. So here, what we're going to do is that we're going to remove all the sharings for that file. As you can see, we have here an extra step, which is a, a switch. And this switch is going to look at the application we're working on. The reason is uh, if we compare the two governance actions that are going to remove the sharing links, uh, for Box, the task that we use to make a file private is named remove share link file task, while for Office 365, this task is called remove everyone file task. So we have to make an extra step to identify the right governance action that we want to use when calling Cloud App Security API. You can see here the endpoint that we're calling, which is bulk governance. And as a parameter, we have to specify the file ID and the application ID. After this, we're resolving the alert in Cloud App Security, just like for the key, but here in this case, it's after removing the sharing. And once again, we're confirming the user that uh, this file uh, has been uh, resolved because we just remove all the sharing that were not acceptable. And the last case we have here is the case where we want to remove external users. So once again, we're calling the Cloud App Security API, but here the governance action will be the remove external file task with again, the file ID and the application ID that are required as parameters. And similar things, we're then resolving the alert and sending an email to the end user for confirmation. Caroline, back to you. All right, well, thank you so much, Seb, for walking us through that flow. So now we're gonna pivot back to the end user perspective. So I've logged into Box as Megan Bowens, and I have a file here, US Employee Social Security Number .docx, and currently it's being publicly shared. So if I go to my inbox, I can see I received an email saying that warning sensitive file external sharing detected request for your input we can see the file that was detected and that access level is currently public at the bottom we can take a couple of actions here we can keep sharing remove sharing or remove external users so for this file i want to remove sharing Awesome, so remove sharing has been successfully registered. So I'm going to pivot back to box. And if we refresh this page, we can see that the icon that this for this document has been removed. So it's no longer being publicly shared. So now that we've seen the end user view, let's take a look at what happened in Cloud App Security. So within Cloud App Security, I have the alert open for that specific file. And I'm actually going to refresh this page. And we can see that the alert was resolved due to that flow that we created, resolved after requesting user validation. So now that this alert has been resolved, it allows me to focus on the alerts that are important to me so that I can Allow, allows me to focus on the alerts that are important to me. So one more thing I wanna look at is what happens in the governance log. So within the governance log, I can see that remove direct shared link, this action happen. So now our admins have a way to track this type of actions as well. And then the last thing I wanna show is within Megan B's inbox, we get an email saying that this governance action completed. So one thing I do wanna to touch on is around user education. It's important for us to educate our users around these types of scenarios, because a lot of the times data leaks happen because users are unaware of the sensitive information that's being shared. So by having a flow that requests for validation, it allows us to 
educate our users to exercise these types of safe data practices. Thank you so much for joining us and tune in for the next one.